Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. One area of uncertainty with our patients with large cell lymphoma is what to do when they relapse after our CHOP chemotherapy. We have a lot of data supporting the use of autologous stem cell transplant in patients who have chemotherapy sensitive relapses. But those data were generated before we had rituximab added to the CHOP chemotherapy. More recent data really begins to question whether or not these patients who are relapsing after our CHOP really do derive benefit from an autologous stem cell transplant. And so, of course, given the toxicities associated with an autologous stem cell transplant, we really want to make certain that we're restricting it or using it for patients who are going to likely benefit. I typically do try autologous stem cell transplants in my patients who have proven themselves to be sensitive to salvage chemotherapy. Really, any patient who is a transplant eligible, stem cell transplant eligible, who experiences a relapse of diffuse large B cell lymphoma should be offered stem cell transplantation because the strategy has curative potential, unlike other strategies. So most centers have a cutoff right around age 70. And so if you have a patient with diffuse large B cell lymphoma, disease comes back after our shop chemotherapy, we will typically re recommend autologous stem cell transplant as their salvage treatment. The most common strategy would be to give RICE chemotherapy or the RDHAP regimen. If patients experience at least a partial remission, then we move them forward to autologous stem cell transplantation, which should cure about half of the patients who have recurrent diffuse large B cell lymphoma. But when I have patients who achieve a less than a partial response to the salvage chemotherapy, those are patients who I really decide need to be treated with other non-chemotherapeutic approaches because I expect their response to the stem cell transplant to be less than optimal and really associated with a great deal more toxicities than the benefit would likely warrant. For those patients, I seek out other experimental approaches, currently looking at different clinical trials with non-chemotherapeutic agents. We look at targeted agents like abrutinib and idelisib in these patients, as well as looking at CAR T cells and other immunological approaches. One area that I think will be very interesting to watch for are the PD-1 and PD-L1 targeted therapies to see whether or not they can actually generate responses in these patients. We have seen them generate very impressive responses in patients who have refractory Hodgkin's disease. And what's really surprising to me is that these are patients who really have very little immune system left after all the chemotherapy they have gotten. But even with that, chemo, with all the chemotherapy they've gotten previously, they really show very dramatic responses to PD-1 and PD-L1 targeted therapies. So I think that's an important area for us to be investigating at this time. Single agent abrutinib does have some activity in recurrent diffuse large B cell lymphoma. If you know the cell of origin and if your patient has the ABC subtype, you can expect a response rate of around 40%. If the patients have the GCB subtype, the response rate is less than 10% and abrutinib is probably not an appropriate therapy for those patients. But for patients with the ABC subtype, abrutinib is uh, a commercially available option, even though not FDA approved for recurrent diffuse large B cell lymphoma.